with Christopher Walker for the Road to Ripped podcast. And today, we're going to be talking all about, you know, how to, the art of taking action. Because, you know, today in society, I mean, we have so much information. We know how to do things, but so often we're paralyzed, unable to take action. And we're going to, you know, get to the ground roots of that to show you how you can actually manifest that mental state so you can actually take action, conquer your goals, and go through that. And we got some other cool stuff we're talking about. We're going to be talking about, you know, identifying yourself based on the nutrition practice that you're employing or the workout approach and how and, and all the pitfalls that can come from, you know, being so wrapped around and um, with that as opposed to just using it as a technique to get you to your goal. And finally, we're going to be talking a little bit about, you know, the importance of actually being happy with the goals that you've achieved and how that will totally reshape your your uh, mental your your mental uh, viewpoint and make everything just so much more enjoyable and smooth and you know my experience with that which is actually really cool um, but before we even jump into any of this stuff we're going to do the second joke in the of the road trip podcast this is probably the funniest joke i've ever heard in my life I was dying laughing for a long time. I thought I felt like I got my appendix just removed. Um, but Chris, so why don't you do the honors? All right, so I'll I'll get to this joke. So this joke comes from Luke, and thank you, Luke, for the uh, submission. We got a bunch of submissions, but the uh, cream rises to the top, and uh, we have the funniest one here. <laughs> uh, all right, so the joke. Standing in the park, I wondered. Why does a frisbee appear bigger the closer it gets? And then it hit me. <laughs> I might have just ruined that punchline. Wait. <laughs> and then it hit me in the head. <laughs> wow. Uh, Jesus. Man, my, my, I need to work on my delivery. No, I, I honestly I didn't realize how how. Uh, so for anyone know. listening right now, this is where the bar is at. So any <laughs> joke is literally yeah. gonna be better. <laughs> no offense to our joke supplier, but like yeah, that was probably something I would come up with when I was like four. Yeah. All right. So we need more submissions. Well, we know. I'm just. I'm just. It was. It was terrific. You know? Yeah. It's actually. Uh, corny jokes are funny. It's, corny yeah. jokes are funny because it's it's like you get you expect this amazingly funny joke and then you're like, wow, that was not funny, but it's just funny how corny that is. Yeah, basically, like one of I think the reason we were laughing before we even could say it was, well, one, I was just looking at your face through this video thing and you're just <laughs> sitting there laughing the entire time, and two, we knew how corny it was. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, thanks, Luke, for the for the jokes. Actually, uh, corny enough to be funny, so that's good. And thanks to everyone <laughs> else who submitted jokes. Um, uh, definitely appreciate the submissions, and if you have any more jokes, shoot them our way via email. Um, just put the subject line "jokes for Road to Rip," and we could read your joke if it's funny enough or corny enough. So mm -hmm. that's good. All right, let's hop into the uh, the show. Well, yeah, well, I mean, let's. I guess the first thing that we um, should really uh, talk about is before we even get to the art of taking action, let's just talk about the pitfalls of self identify or identifying yourself with your nutrition or your fitness approach and that's a common theme that you see a lot you know um, like not yeah, to a name lot. any <laughs> a lot a lot a like lot. with you know paleo practitioners crossfitters um, you know Anybody. people, the, people like doing like clean meat eating meatheads meat meat body orthorexic uh, um, it, it's well it's I was, interesting I, let's yeah. talk about the pros first I, I think because the pros by talking about the pros or maybe a bit of the human psychology behind it, then we can really understand why people why people do this, why we do it. Yeah, like I don't think we're excluded from this either, because I, I I know in, in myself I've in the past like identified myself with certain groups of people, like triathletes, or um, and you like take pride in that identification. Yeah, no, I I, I uh, I've been there too, and I have. Um... And it is ridiculous. Uh, but but I guess th let's well, I guess let's address like what are the sort of the the, the pros behind be behind identifying yourself with approach. And let's give for example like let's give an an example. Um, do you want to use like paleo and then like CrossFit as the two obvious choices? Uh, sure. Yeah. Um, or it could be paleo. And it could be like bodybuilding style training six days a week, one to two body parts. Just yeah, like say I'm, you know, but, but that's another thing. Is like I'm a bodybuilder, um, 
that you know I think it, that that's when you identify yourself with, as a certain something. So if you're if you're like I'm paleo, I'm bulletproof, I'm a bodybuilder, I'm a CrossFitter, then you're unnecessarily placing um, expectations on yourself. That what happens when you don't feel like doing some of the things down the road. So maybe you're like super gung ho about about your new entry into like identifying yourself in a certain way. But then what happens when you kind of get tired of something? Um, are you no longer a CrossFitter when you don't feel like um, doing every you know workout of the day, every wad? Uh, can you? It, it, does that jeopardize your your ego or you like your identity? Or um, what about you know if you're if you're a triathlete and you don't feel like swimming anymore, like you hate swimming, so you just want to bike and run? Does that jeopardize your identity as that as a gr member of that group? Um, and and is that ridiculous? Because <laughs> maybe that's like maybe that's ridiculous to um, to tie your identity into something like that, uh, so that you actually damage your ego when you don't feel like living up to the expectations that you just placed on yourself by making that arbitrary identification. And and you like, also, I mean, you also isolate yourself from from other people because. I mean, if you truly like wrap your like believe that like paleo is a part of you, like that's who you are. I'm a paleo person, and you have this compulsive need to to instill your own paleo beliefs onto other people. You're just gonna look like the biggest tool. Um, you know, using a nutrition or a workout approach, you're using it because it helps you get a result, helps you attain something through it's one. It's a tool. Means, it's a tool. It's a tool in your yeah. toolbox. So that's how it should be used. And whether someone says, oh, you know, paleo is bad, paleo doesn't work, paleo is wrong, that's fine. They're entitled to their own opinion. That does not have to affect you whatsoever. Uh, you should do as you do and not let other, other people, like what other people are doing, um, you know, it's the, feel like it's attacking you because that's just a false sense of self. You're identifying with your egoic mind and you always have this compulsive need to be right and to prove other people wrong, which is just a state of massive insecurity. If something's working for you, that's terrific. You don't have to throw that on everyone else. And if someone's doing something differently, that's great too. Like there's more than one way to skin a cat and what's going to work best for someone, maybe someone finds another approach um, works better for them, for their lifestyle or, or, or for them personally. So... Um, Let's like bat, let's just like like let's step back from like massively like getting this dogmatic mentality with any sort of nutrition or fitness protocol and like let's let the resp the results speak for themselves. Let's lead by example and as opposed to always like instilling your values and other people and showing all this stuff in their face because it's only gonna make them you know resent you. Yeah, I mean to to make a to draw a parallel, if you're if you're doing it in. Uh anything other than fitness then I think people or, or nutrition and th this whole health sphere the fitness industry then people like almost unanimously agree that, that it's just really freaking annoying when somebody will walk up to you and just say like you know uh, you're doing that wrong uh, that, that part of your life is completely wrong and you know you need to change it right now what are you gonna do you're gonna instantly be like no like screw you I'm you know, I'm doing my thing. You're gonna want to rebel, protect your ego. That's just the way humans are. That's that's totally the the, uh, the way humans are, and nothing gets accomplished from that. And yeah. I mean, and if you really are adamant about, like, if you think that you're that what you're doing works very very well, and you want to share that with someone, then what's gonna cause the opposite effect is shoving it in their face. So I mean, I you know, I'm a I'm in great shape, um, and. Uh, and I get a lot of friends and people that like don't even realize what I'm doing in terms of the fitness front, like asking me, you know, for advice. And a lot of times, like I mean, just rec a recent example, one of my one of my close buddies, he's got a friend that he goes to school with, and you know, he was into like the big, like um, he was like doing like he was in the bodybuilding kind of uh, frame where he would like either be like uh, like where he would be eating 300 grams of protein per day, which is definitely more than really necessary or feasible, um, and he would be eat, like training like you know in the gym two hours a day, six days a week. Um, and and so, I mean, I didn't like, I didn't call him out. I'm not like, what you're doing is stupid, it's wrong, it's crazy. More so like, like we just hang, hung out and then I just like kind of like, then he just kind of wanted to see what I was doing and I like, I didn't say what he was doing was wrong. I'm just like, yeah, you know, I'm like, this really works really well. And the next thing I know, you know, you know like he sends me a Facebook message 
you know, gets my workout program, reads through it, lo like loves it, makes clicks with him, makes so much sense. And now he's on like the you know the three uh, like the three workouts per week uh, protocol, and I'm excited to see like the results he's gonna get. It's gonna be it's gonna be way more you know sustainable, and he's gonna find that his lifts are gonna go up fast. Um, but like that kind of happens all like all the time. Um, and I've had a few a few friends that like literally like I listen to them like you know like a couple of buddies that want to like actually a buddy and his girlfriend they want to get like lose some weight. Uh, this was several months ago, and I was listening to what they're doing. I'm like okay. Um, twelve like because <laughs> they're actually both on twelve hundred calorie diets. Um, I'm like I'm like okay, you're both on twelve hundred calorie diets, huh? Well, I mean, I was kind of just like I wasn't saying like flat out like saying like that is ridiculous. I'm like yeah, well, I mean, I mean if I were you, I mean you probably burn more calories than your girlfriend, don't you think? Wouldn't you need to go? And I I, I kind of just like just kind of like peeked and asked to see what he was doing and let him kind of like bring it out and then um. Then I've, invariably he asked me questions, and like you know, um, and then I, I pretty much was useful eating several like meals a day, and then uh, I inter I entertained the whole the whole intermittent fasting and having like, big meals. He was like, oh. at first he didn't believe that would work. I mean, I mean, technically you could go to Subway and eat two foot long subs with like double protein, and you'd be two thousand calories and you'd be able to lose weight no problem. Uh, and this guy was like, no way, that's not possible. I'm like, dude. <laughs> That's possible. Like your, like your, your, your stature, your height, your activity level. You're probably burning, you know, minimum 25 to 2800 calories. If you're eating 2,000, you're gonna be losing at least a pound a week. And he's like, well, don't have to like eat often to, to stimulate my metabolism. And I, I just, I'm telling all, all these things. And I'm letting, I'm letting him ask the questions. Yeah. And then like before I even overload his brain, I'm like, hey, just try that. Focus on that. And then like the, like you. Then like the next day, he's messaging me. He's like, holy crap, this is the easiest diet I've ever done. Like I was dying before. I can't believe like. I can't believe like this is gonna work. And then within a couple weeks, he he, uh, he was like, oh, oh my god, I'm like down two pounds. I'm like, yeah. And then like now he's all like now he's like all into the whole like IF thing and two meals. And I mean I just use that because that works very well and it's so practical and it it, it frees you from an obsessive mentality. Um, and so I mean that's like like that happened because I really let like I really didn't judge him for what he was doing and tell him that was wrong. I let him pull out information from me. Yeah, and that's that's leading by example. That's, you know, if you're in great shape, and then other people want to be in great shape, and they come to you, they're gonna naturally just want to ask questions. And as opposed to being like, I'm in great shape, and uh, what you're doing is completely wrong, then they're gonna be like, oh, this, guy, you know, he's kind of an asshole, so I just uh, don't want to listen yeah. to him, even if he knows exactly he knows what he's doing. Um, but I'm yeah, he, that's the funny thing. Even if yeah. even if you know exactly what you're doing, but you have like this sort of asshole mentality where you always have to be the best and better than everyone and your way is right and that way is wrong and stupid and you make people feel like you, you're just condescend to everyone, they're not going to want to listen to you. Yeah. Like they're not going to want to listen to you. So I mean if you can just if you can just totally just focus on what you're doing and let them sort of um, and, and, not, and not like judge them and not judge their ways. Like look, at least they're, they're putting an effort. They're, even if what they're doing is not going to work, at least they're, they're putting an effort and let them find it out on their own. Because if they yeah. find it out on their own, it's they're actually going to take action. And this is one of the things that we're going to talk about. Like if they kind of, if you don't shove the answer in their face and you let them come to you for the answer, then they'll take action, uh, or at least way more likely than than the previous scenario. And like I mean, I've, I've had like like I've had some uh, fr Facebook friends that, um, or I guess Kino Body followers have added me on Facebook. And like one time, uh, I guess he saw one of his friends post who was talking about. Uh, sort of some bro science stuff. So I mean, you know, doing high reps for high reps for muscle tone, and he was like, and he was just like, comment. He was like, Greg, like, come over here, like, prove this guy, prove that this guy's wrong. What he's doing is stupid. He doesn't know what he's talking about. I'm just like, dude, it's like, I'm like, it's it's okay. There's there's like, like, nothing is gonna happen from that sort of m mentality and trying to attack someone. Yeah. Um, just you know, focus on what you're doing. Let your what your results speak for themselves, and um, trying to, I mean, you. You can't win an argument. Like once you start an argument, like both people have lost. Like there's no winning of an argument. And, and yeah. that's that's really like you know that advice is is good for people who are in the position to teach. So like you're you have results, and then you're when you have the results, then you're in the position to teach people. If you don't have the results yet, you need to be learning and trying to like get the results first. So if you look at it from the other side of the table, and you're you're in the position where you're trying to learn how to do things. 
um, you know, it's it's it comes down. It's almost like like an imp- apprenticeship or whatever. You got to just go to somebody that you trust, and then trust because you trust them. Tr- uh, trust them enough. Trust their recommendations enough to just take action, and um, put that into action in your life, and then you know start to learn the process and uh, intuitively absorb that information and, and so you can actually just have that you can like intuit what you need to do next you can uh, go by feel as opposed to like meticulous second guessing questioning uh, what not just take action see what happens slightly tweak things for even for years to be honest um, that's that's really you know months to years over that period of time you get all the results you're looking for and then you can be in the position to teach people because you have experience and um, then people are going to listen as well because they know like what what happened as opposed to like oh i read it on a message board yesterday um, and now i'm going to like yell at you that you're wrong so you know it's definitely if you, you know if you just look at it from a distance then and observe like the scenario it, it's much more effective to to teach from a position of like leading by example mm-hmm. Oh my God! And it's insane how much time. Like, come to think about it, I just realized like it's insane how much time people waste on forums and internet debates yeah. trying to prove like, oh, like no, body weight training is better than weight training, or weight training is 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 way better yeah. than body weight training, or you know, carbs. Like, just debating and trying to prove that their way is right, and it's ridiculous. It is even it stuff. Is, it it's is, like so much stuff too that they can't measure. Like right. biochemi- biochemistry is like a huge topic of debate in any like any nutrition forum and and it's like are you people kidding me right now how many hours do you waste uh talking about biochemistry on these forums in terms of like uh protein uptake or like (laughs) all sorts of nonsense when when the majority of the people on the forums have no results right some people probably do have some results but like the majority of the people don't i know it's 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 yeah it's very very true Ah, then that's just interference with people's ability to take action is always, you know, um, just having these internal, like, just questioning everything, trying to, like, just trying to, you know, like, just just obsessing way too much about all these little details, and it just takes them out of out of the actual action part. Um, yeah. And, yeah, most people that are on these heated debates, they've never achieved really anything in the fitness nutrition department. Like, they've never, they've probably never... Um, got into great shape or built muscle, built strength, all they've done is just read as much conflicting information about it and then made their own like, you know, made their own association with some particular practice and then is spending all their time trying to prove other people wrong. And the compulsive need to prove that your way is right and to prove that other people are wrong is sternly based on the fear of death because if you were to be wrong, your ego is going to die. And that's where you're coming from. You're coming from your egoic mind. That's where you're identifying. Like you're you're trying to have this ego survive, and that's just a false sense of self. And it just it just makes you look like pathetic little uh, five year old crybaby. Um, so and that's a huge pitfall. It, this is all like it, all the topics in this episode are just like interweaving right now, just totally in a, and, in a and nice that, way. But but this is like one of the pitfalls of of identifying yourself with something other than like yourself so it's like what are you you know are you paleo are you bodybuilder are you <laughs> bulletproof or it's like no I'm, I'm Chris like I, I do this stuff it's a tool in my toolbox and I, I do what I do to look the way I want to look and perform the way I want to perform yeah. and I'm not that so it doesn't hurt my ego whatsoever when someone says like when someone challenges one of the things that I'm doing because I know it gets results in my own life, so I'm like, okay, like you don't have to do it if you don't want to. I know it gets results, but like, there are probably other ways to do this. You know, yeah. that's that's another one of the problems is people think there's only one way to do something, and that's why they're arguing over everything. It's like this uh, is the best way, this is the best way, this will be. You know, it's like, okay, shut up, and, just actually try something and see what happens. And, and if it works <laughs> for you, it works. And I, you know, I remember when I first was going for the lean Hollywood look. Before that, I was really into the bodybuilding camp, and and so when I transitioned to uh, to going for the lean Hollywood look, you know, I would kind of look down upon all these bodybuilders who were just focused, they were just obsessing about mass. But like that's ridiculous. Like 
I, like I just you know in retrospect I'm like you know what I'm doing my own thing if yeah. someone wants to get huge and massive that's totally cool that's their decision good for them that's exactly. they're, they're doing something you know um, they're making something of themselves but maybe it's just not what I would do for myself and that's it it's not what I would maybe in their shoes that's what they want and that's totally cool why would you judge someone for doing like it, it's it, it's, it's the insane. same thing as like like a job for example yeah. if someone loves to be a lunch lady at a high school or something like that mm -hmm. I don't know it's like the most random thing I could think of but if they if they love their job and they're just going and they that's like what sets them on fire they just love serving like macaroni and cheese to little kids um, who are you to judge what they do it's it's the same situation if you, you wouldn't be happy being a lunch lady then don't be a lunch lady go do something else that makes you happy it's maybe the they, maybe they wouldn't be happy being a high powered lawyer you know exactly five hundred dollars an hour it's probably so, I mean, miserable like yeah it's it's like you know you gotta you gotta do whatever like you're into and then let other people do what they're gonna do and I think just it's important that we just kind of get this message out just because it's gonna if if you're in the habit of trying to like judging other people and trying to prove that your way is right and their way is wrong you're you're just wasting all this time that could be totally better better spent and on a funny note like you know I've been for a few months now I've been really uh, I've been into uh, I guess you know I've been doing a bit of meditation and Eckhart Tolle and it's 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 cool to see some of these crazy changes that happen and what I've noticed is that like really it's sort of impossible for anyone to really get me angry or pissed and like several several times you know in the past few weeks someone will do something like oh like you know like oh sorry I did that like you must be pissed I'm like no that's stupid. Why would I? Why would I be pissed? Like, no, you're, what, you're, like, talking to the, you're talking to Greg now. I'm yeah, like, now. like, like you, like what you, what, what you're doing, like has is gonna have very little impact on my own internal state because that comes from within. And I've, and, and and that and like I'm like if you're if you're super late for and we're gonna hang out and you're super late, I'm not gonna be pissed off. It doesn't really affect me. That's like what you're doing, and I can just be happy, content without my within myself. And, and that's and then I mean the only reason I'd be upset is if, if you were super late or you ditched plans or flakes or if um, you know you didn't want uh, to the situations are endless and I, and but but for whatever reason I, I, like that would just the only thing that would hurt would be my ego my ego's validation to feel to uphold some uh, ridiculous standard to 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 feel like it's worthy or 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 whatnot but like when you're not associating with your ego and just simply present and you're not you know, dragging all all this past baggage with you, then it's just like, oh, I'm fine right now, doing whatever I'm doing. It's a, so, yeah. but that's a side note, you know, um, for anyone in, in, interested. But uh, it's cool. So, I mean, I think I think the net. We should really. <laughs> Chris is laughing at me. He's. I'm gonna get Chris and Eckhart Tolle soon, and he, in his mind, he's gonna be blown. So, I mean, I guess right. the next. I guess the next. Uh, trust me, Eckhart Tolle. Oh my God! It is. It was insane. Um, but I guess, I guess the next really thing that we want to, um, I guess, talk about is, is more into, um, you know, what's really robbing people of the ability to take action. And I, I, I have a funny, like, I have a really cool um, story that I want to talk about is, like, when you know, when I was uh, 12, 13, like, I desperately wanted to become strong and fit and muscular like it was it was like like that's what I wanted for myself that's why I saw myself like that was a massive goal of mine and my mom had a personal trainer at the time and finally she was like hey like you know uh, Greg like if you want to come down for, or Gregory uh, if you want to come down for like the last 15 minutes maybe you can ask the personal trainer some questions um, and see you know if you're ready to start working out and so I came down I, I talked to him and and um, and uh, he showed me like he showed me like one exercise and and he was like, you know what? Next time, like you get good at this one. Next time, I'll show you this other exercise, and it's gonna like, like your chest is gonna get, it's gonna blow up. Like you're gonna put on a ton of muscle. And I'm like, oh my god! Like yes! Like I have to get this next exercise. But like, so I just focused on the first one he taught me, and I did that. And I mastered. It, and I got really good at it. And so like the next month, whatever, he showed me the, the next move, and then I started doing both those moves. And but then there was another move that I needed to learn how to do. Um, and so I kept sort of, like I, so I mean. In essence, by him just giving me one little piece, one little treat, it kept me wanting more, and I mastered that. And because I only had one little thing to do, it was so easy to take action. It was so easy. If he just showed me this entire, you know, workout, like three days a week, three different workout routines, five random different exercises, 
as a 13-year-old kid, what am I going to do? I'm going to be, like, overwhelmed. I'm like, oh. Uh. But, like, I just showed, learned uh, one exercise. I'm just going to go play Mario Kart. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah I, just, I just learned one exercise, and I put my faith in him. I'm like, hey, this guy's a personal trainer. This guy knows what he's talking about. Um, this exercise is going to work. As he said, it's going to help me, like, you know, build, like, add muscle to my, to my upper body. I'm like, this is going to work. I didn't go on the internet and was like, um, well, is it true that doing a push-up with feet on chair is actually going to build muscle? Is this wrong? Is there a better exercise to do? Yeah. This is yeah. wrong. I did this exercise for one day. I don't see any difference. This guy's wrong. He's wrong. No. God, no, I didn't do that shit. I put my faith in him, and I, I, and I just dug it out. I just did it. I learned to like enjoy the sections. I'm like, yes, yes, this is what it takes. This is what I'm going to do. Oh, my God, I'm going to get so jacked. Oh, I, I can't wait to learn the next, the next exercise. And, and man, like, that's like really where my the snowball effect came where I was like really starting to pick up the love for fitness. And it was incredible. And I did actually that. I did that same process with a neighbor on my street, um, Colton. He's actually in a couple of my YouTube videos. And I literally showed him a couple things, and then a couple more, and a couple more. And I'm like, and I'm like, dude, like, come back, talk to me when you do eight chin-ups. I'm not giving you another piece of information. Don't even message me until you can do. You've done this and you've hit eight chin-ups. And then finally, he earns that next little conversation with me. And it sounds totally arrogant what I'm doing, but there's a reason why. Like, this is sort of what a lot of like uh, teachers in their given uh, field do, like martial artists, you know. The, you, it, it's like a sort of it, it, it works on the psychology principle where like um, it strongly works on the psychology principle and like especially like that's how we're geared like we want to earn something and once we earn it and we had to we had to like expe expend expend effort to achieve it then that has a lot more value a lot more weight to us but if someone just gives you a bunch of stuff. You didn't have to do anything for it. They just threw it at you or threw all, all this information. Then it's going to be hard to implement. Yeah. And so, I mean, that's one of the – actually, that's a cool reason to get, like, a, to, to get a coach because you're literally – like, you're going for them to seek all this, like, information to teach you really what they've done with hundreds of clients, what they've done with themselves. And, like, you're investing money with them. So, I mean – Whatever program they give you, you're gonna be so committed. Like you've you, you've in, like you've emailed them, whatever. Uh, you've seek them out, which I guess you've heard of them. You've seen their videos, their articles. You've seek them out. You've listened, like w whatever. And then um, you've invested with them. So I mean, you're gonna get results as long as you understand that there's no magic pill. <laughs> yeah, and, and um, you take action. Like action. It's all about action. It's all about trusting. What they tell you to do, because it's not in their best interest to like try and sabotage you. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know I think one really important thing about taking action is like, for a lot of people, the first three weeks, the a hundred percent of the first three weeks, you, there are no excuses. There are no 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 excuses. So I don't care like, if if you get in the habit of missing a workout. Or if you get in the habit of like, you know what, um, I'm just gonna like go massively over my macros today or my calories, and like if you get in the habit of of making up excuses and not sticking to the plan, then you're just gonna set that precedent, and it's gonna always be a lingering issue. Um, yeah. And once you've missed, like for a lot of people, once you've missed one workout, then it's just a string of missed workouts and a string of dysregulated consistency. So what I like literally like like recommend is like. No matter what, you're going to do the workout. No matter what, even if that means like even if that means like um, shifting things around, going to the gym at two in the morning, and this this is not necessarily what I would do in the long run. But for some people that just literally, for the life of them, they can't stick to it. It's like you gotta have this mentality where uh, you, you'll get the workout done, and there's no excuses. And you punish yourself for for procrastinating. So if you're like you're supposed to do the workout right after work, but then you you know you decided to to like to go watch TV, and now you've like you're having uh, dinner, and then now you have some work to do, and now you don't have the time. BS. You gotta you gotta uh, you gotta punish yourself 
for dropping the ball. And you got to be like, oh, okay, now I'm going to have to go work out at 2 in the morning, which is going to be brutal. I'm going to have a terrible sleep tomorrow, which, which is probably not ideal. But next time you're like, I have to work out because you know what? I am this. I am not a little soft boy made out of gel anymore. I am hard. I am of wood. I got a, I got like, you know, spar in mine. And I realized that... <laughs> I know this is this is massive stuff, man. This no, I know I, this I works. totally understand. I you totally okay? understand. It's it's it, the idea of of setting the precedent for yourself in the beginning. Right. Like you in, like you just said, like you don't need to do this all entire the entire time. You might need to do it for like four days, five days, two weeks, right. three weeks. Uh, just to depending on where you are psychologically when you make that commitment. If you make a commitment to make yourself better at anything, like you should actually commit to it. And right. If that involves changing away the changing around like your current lifestyle, that totally makes sense because your current yeah. lifestyle is not working. It's not yeah. getting you where you want to go. So you're gonna need to add some additions to it or and shift it, things around. And, yeah, this is like like my older brother. Uh, he, uh, he he gets in the habit of working out, and he he might work out for like two three months consistently, and then he'll like let himself miss a workout, and then he'll like th then there's then he'll miss like another workout. And then it might like work out once a week, and then it'll just be like, oh, like what the hell? Like what's the point? And like it's crazy because he's just at that threshold where he's starting to make these impressive gains. Because my brother is naturally like he stays, you know, naturally at around 10, 11 percent body fat. So when he does put on a bit of muscle, it starts to it starts to show. Um, and so right when he's on this threshold of having massive gains, and right when people are about to be like, holy shit, Graham, dude, you're you're looking great. He just falls off the wagon. I just want to be like, what the. F Oh, mother, father, come on! Like you can't, like you can't, like give yourself. You can't just give yourself an excuse for not missing a workout. Like you're setting this, you're setting this routine, you're setting this plan. You gotta follow through it. And who, like whether you're, you know, whether your girlfriend dumps you, you know, whether your your dog is sick, whether you got an extra homework assignment, and you got, like, I mean, you know. Um, it's one yeah. hour a day, and, and if you do the workout, you'll find that you'll probably be more productive. So, Yeah, if you think about it, it's like, especially what we prescribe, it's like yeah. three, four hours a week tops. Yeah. A, and, a week. A week. That's <laughs> a rid week. ridiculous. And it's, then it, it's very, yeah. It, how can you not fit that into your schedule? Three to four hours of, of time where you're, and it's not just like a punishment time. It's like a time where you're sitting, it, it, well, you're not sitting, but you're actively making yourself better. You're improving your life. You're getting one step closer to your goal every week. Um, how can you like rationalize that away to yourself and be like, I, you know, I'm not going to do that, mm -hmm. even though you deep down you really want it. Yeah. You want it, but you don't want to like commit to it, which is just another po mind poison. It's like, <laughs> I want this, but I don't want to work out. I don't want to eat more. I, I want to gain muscle. I don't want to eat more. It's like what? Oh, that doesn't work. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Uh, and like you know, one thing I want to stress, like using myself as an example, like I literally. I work out. I, I do three mandatory workouts per week. I don't miss it for the world. Like I will be in the gym. And you know what? Sometimes oh, sometimes oh, you know what? Maybe I legitimately can't work out. Um, then I'll do the next best thing. Like okay, uh, you know what? I'm supposed to do you know, I'm supposed to do like chest, shoulders, triceps today. Uh, all right, I can't make it to the gym, but like just to just to keep it going and just to make keep that mental sharpness. Um, I'm gonna do like some one-arm push-ups, some handstand push-ups. I'm gonna do something, or maybe you had a cardio workout and like you literally can't go for an, an hour. But you know what? Just going for half an hour, even though you're not getting the full benefit, it's gonna it's gonna instill those that mindset. And it's gonna sharpen the sharpen the knife, so that you're gonna be manifesting the uh, the mind the, the tactics that are required to actually be someone that's gonna achieve your goals. So I mean, there's always something you can do, and even if you've injured something. There's still like you still do like I know someone like kind of um, you know uh, twist his ankle or something or he had like an ankle cast and then I like I didn't like I saw him like I saw him I'm like well, like you know why weren't you at the, like where were you I didn't see you at the gym he was like oh I had an ankle cast I'm like so like, so you, yeah, you, you can't do upper body work you, yeah you can't you, you can't slide down on a bench and push some weight with your ankle cast and I mean so I mean most people take excuse they have to, everything has to be a hundred percent perfect. For them to, to follow through, and that's yeah. not life, you know. You gotta yeah. make do with whatever situation you have. So I mean, I remember I like I broke my finger, um, this finger right here. It's a little bit twisted, man. Yeah, it I, is. <laughs> I had a finger cast, and uh, I like I didn't start missing workouts. I did like I could do some dips. I could do some machine exercises where like I didn't have to use my finger at all, 
and I like I did, literally did what I could. Yeah, well, it's it's it all goes down to the concept concept of showing up. And it's not about perfection ever. It's just about like continually just showing up, and that's really what um, will lead to success. And that's actually something we can start talking about because that was another topic of like the truth about success and like reaching your goal or your goals. A lot of it just has to do with forward motion. It doesn't matter like how big or small the step is. It, it's just showing up. And, and we actually like uh, got a question this week about um, not even fitness related, but it was like, how do you make a you know a great blog um, or you know a great show? And really, what it comes down to is a lot of it's just like you just show up routinely. You you deliver the best that you can deliver at that time in terms of content or whether it's like your workout or whatever, you just keep going at it and don't look at it as some like magic pill or like some, you know, three month thing that's going to change your life forever and then you'll be forever different. It's more it's just like this is like a lifelong process or into the foreseeable future kind of a process and you just show up every, you know, every other day or three times a week or every week or every month or whatever like the time period it is that you need to be doing something, you just... You just go and do it to the best of your ability at that at that point, and you just move forward. And it, it doesn't help anybody, including yourself, if you just make excuses and move backwards. Even if it's like half an inch forward, when you expect it to move a foot forward or a yard or a meter or whatever, and you only move half an inch forward, you're moving forward, and you're still showing up. And maybe next week you're going to feel better than you were at that point, and then you'll move you know, the expected amount forward. Um, yeah, for example, like I'll some sometimes I go to workouts and I'm tired or my uh, like I can't perform at this full level that I would like to perform at, and I'm sure this happens to everyone listening to this. You go in, you're expecting to do something, a certain amount of reps or sets or pull a certain amount of weight or whatever, and uh, it's just not happening that day. It's like, all right, I'm already out here, I'm already just like doing my thing, so I'm gonna just um, keep you know do maybe a little bit more like whatever I can do. Uh, so I'm not to the point where I'm not like compromising just to, in the name of like trying to to do a certain amount of reps or whatever. But you just do it. You don't worry about the fact that you can't. Your performance wasn't up to par that day. Like I made a step forward. That's a, that's a that's progress. So then you're like, all right, maybe next time I'll feel more rested. Maybe I need to get more sleep. I need to eat better or something. And then you go back the next time and you're feeling better and you you know make a full step forward. Um, and that you know like Greg, we were talking about before we we started recording about the uh, like the truth about success and like the definition and like what's next really for people because because everyone really has this goal of like getting this incredible body or this, this physique that's like you know head turning and whatnot which usually involves you know a good amount of like muscle development or muscularity with like lower body fat so like what happens when you get there you know how if you especially if you get there quickly i i think it's detrimental to to success and your progress if you do it quickly as opposed to doing it over a long period of time where you learn the right habits and your body becomes resilient in that state as opposed to just going down super fast to to this like perfect body and then you like rebound all over and yo yo and, and whatnot and, and that's what we were talking about before we we're talking about how um like now like cuz like you're like super lean and everything you find that you can get away with eating like, eating more food without gaining yeah. fat, right? Yeah, That's but big. it's because it took me years to get to this point. Like it was a steady, like slow progress over the last couple of years. Right. And, and now and, I'm at a point where I can like bounce back from eating yeah. stuff that is surprising. You know, I'm like, wow, I'm still like getting leaner. But yeah, but and, that and, wouldn't happen if I would have done this over three months, right? You know, like mm -hmm. That's the thing. Like yeah, if you were gonna just manhandle hand your way and just eat at a massive deficit and try and like you know, drop 10 pounds a month, um, then, like, the opposite uh, the opposite phenomenon would occur. You'd just be like, you'd be like, oh, well, I hit my, I guess, uh, okay, you know, let's, uh, I guess I'm happy with how I look, and then you just try and eat some more food, and then you just find, like, you wouldn't be able to stay in this balance. You'd just be gaining. And because you've just dropped so fast, like, your leptin levels are just naturally super low, so your body's going to be in this primed rebound state, so... You'll be able to, like those ten pounds you lost in a month. You'll be able to gain those back in a few days. Oh yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely. Because so, your because your appetite is like all over the place. Your, if you're your the appetite system. is is so jacked. And your up. body your body is just primed to gain weight primed because you lost it so fast. 
And that, if, that, if there is any secret to staying lean for your entire life, it is to take, when you make the commitment to get lean, take it as a multi-year process. So this is like going to be a two-year process for you, for example. And use that two years to slowly inch your way down. Because mm -hmm. your body will, it's like so slow that your body's going to be adjusted. When you get there, you're going to be like, oh, damn, I look good. And I feel like I could do this forever. Mm -hmm. And then you can do it forever, basically. <laughs> I mean, I haven't lived to forever yet, but I'm pretty <laughs> confident that I know like what I'm doing and I know how to reach this. And I know how to teach other people um, how to reach a lean state and just kind of keep it. And that's valuable. That's really valuable. That's super. That's super valuable. That's totally. I was gonna say something very profound, but I just got too caught up in what you're talking about. I just it slipped my mind. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> I was gonna say something s extraordinarily profound. Oh, I um, bet. But I, you know, I guess uh, I wanted to share this one. This one quote that um, Brad Pilon made in Fitness Black oh, yeah. Book, Rusty Fitness Black Book. Uh, he actually shared it. So um, let me pull it up here. It's it's actually and really. Then, and then you responded, um, and you got seven likes in your response. <laughs> Dude. It was a popular response. Yeah, so apparently, you know, people were, uh, but, I mean, so here was what Brad Pilon said, which is really cool. In our, in our never-ending quest for 12-pack abs, as a side note, 12-pack abs are impossible, but it's, the point is, it's just the point is this exaggeration, this unattainable um, goal. Um, yeah. In our never-ending quest for 12-pack halves, 0% body fat, which is also impossible, uh, <laughs> super strength, flexibility, conditioning, let's not forget the wise words. Do not spoil what you have by desiring what you have not. It's okay to want to improve, but remember to also be happy with what you have already achieved. This is very profound. Yeah. Um, and then so, um, then someone commented, the second you are happy with what you got, you start uh, feeling at what you want to achieve, to be honest, at least if it requires a strong will. And so um, I responded. I said, um, I'm at, I disagree. If you are not happy with what you have right now and always seeking some form of happiness or fulfillment in the future, be it through achieving a goal, uh, your happiness will always be projected in the future. So in essence, if you're not happy with what you achieved thus far, you'll likely never be. I also say this because I've been there and even leaned down to 6 to 7% body fat, thinking I still had more to lose. Crazy, I know. And so, like, just to illustrate, like, um, some of you may have seen my shrink wrap YouTube video. It's where I got like totally shredded, 6 7% body fat. And I remember I posted that on Facebook, on my Kino Body Facebook page, and someone was like, holy, like, you, you look lean as hell, man. Oh, my God. And I'm like, yeah, dude, but like, you know, still like four or five more pounds to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like literally, you're, like, you're just like shredded to the bone. You're just like straight. Yeah, literally like, shred looking shredded. Amazing. Basically, yeah. a condition that that that's that's what the condition that everyone else is setting the goal for. But then you're sitting there and you're like, I got this, but I'm not happy. I I want more, and that is again that kind of brings up the point of like tying your identity into what you're doing. Um, right. What what happens when you? How do you define success so that you're not dissatisfied, and that you actually are satisfied? Is, is it is that real? Like how do you you know? I don't know. I'm just throwing these questions. Well, out there. Like honestly, like when I was when I was leading down, like I was literally so obsessed about getting ripped, getting shredded, getting, and so I put so much like effort um, and you know energy into it, and I kept like thinking like because I never really I, I never really um, I guess felt like happy and content with like the progress I was making. I, I just like I never realized how lean I was. I was like, oh my god! Like, I was like, I kept having, thinking I had to get leaner, I had to get leaner, I had to get leaner, and it was ridiculous. It's like if I, like there was like literally I was like, there was nothing like there was very little more fat to burn off, and even getting leaner, it would have just made me look like just skinny. ridiculous, like skinny yeah. and just just like starve, you know. Um, and so that was like the, the the problem that I had is was just that like I I wasn't being objective with myself. I wasn't really um, realizing, you know, what was going on. And so, I mean, I've had this with some of my clients where they've dropped down to like seven, six, seven percent body fat, and they they're like, "Hey, Greg, like, I, you know, uh, what's the next step now? I feel like I still need to get a little bit leaner." I'm like, "Dude, you're lean as hell. What are you talking about? You are yeah. so stressed. Like, you're like, you know, Tyler Durden in Fight Club. Like, n there's no more sense in dieting anymore. Like, now is the time to switch." Focus on either maintaining 
or let's go for some for some muscle building. But uh, like I mean, a lot of times, it, like if you get like super lean, like you honestly like um, at first you might not even realize it. Like now going back, I'm like, okay, yes, like this is good. Okay, this is I am this is perfect. Yeah, uh, I can chill now, and I become very objective with myself. Like even at the gym, I'm like, oh my god, okay, like I'm 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 bench like I'm I'm incline benching 260 for six. This is enough strength. I don't need to get any stronger. Nothing like there's no reason to. It's like so I'm no longer obsessing about like compulsively trying to become stronger and stronger. I'm just like you know what, uh, feeling pretty good right here. And so I mean that's a good realization to make. Like yes, it's great to set goals and push yourself, but eventually it's like it's not a bad idea to to be like fully happy and content with where you are. You yeah, know? I agree, and, and I think well, especially in this kind of a scenario, it it becomes a fun. Maybe this is what I recommend when you get down to that point, but well, it's always fun to have a goal, right? You know, to always have something in front of you. But it doesn't have to be something that's obsessive, like we're saying. You know, it's like, be satisfied. It's like, oh, I'm pretty pretty lean. I look damn good. I'm strong. I'm feeling good about myself. I'm going to set another goal, and it's going to be something like, it's kind of what I'm personally doing. It's fun. Um, how far can I push it and still be this lean? Um it, you know, it, it goes back to the concept of, of your bodybuilder friend who thought he had to eat six meals a day, 300 grams of protein, and be in the gym for two hours every day, you know. Uh, but then he could get similar or better results by working out three days a week, not eating nearly as much protein, etc. right? So what if you set a goal and you're, like, strong, you're lean, you kind of are at your, at your uh, definition of like what you thought would be success when you first established the goal, um, then maybe you can try and just push it a little bit and be like, how much can I get away with here that will turn this into a sustainable lifestyle where you know I can go out to eat four nights a week and I, I know how to navigate a restaurant well and um, have some fun, eat great food, and enjoy my friends and family and not be obsessed with fitness and whatnot. How far can I push it and still look the same way? That's an interesting goal, and it's fun, you know. Yeah, man, I I totally agree. Like, funny little side note. Like, I um uh, just the other just the other night, like I was, I, like I was I couldn't sleep. I realized like I was too low in carbs, and when I don't have enough carbs, I can have a hard time falling asleep. So I was making some pancakes, and then my friend came by, and she was like, Are "You seriously <laughs> eating these pancakes?" And I'm like, "Yeah." And like I don't understand. Like you're in such great shape. Like why would you be eating pancakes like 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 at this time? And like just on <laughs> a side note, this one of your like two a.m. meals again. This was this was more like a, <laughs> this is more like a four or five a.m. meal. Just be, but like that's but that is irrelevant. Uh, but anyways, this wasn't just like some pancakes. These were gluten free pancakes, by the way, which are fantastic. And I actually like cooked them, and then I I sp- put on some like chocolate chips. Um, yeah. On top of them, and then fold them in half. Let the chocolate chip, chips melt, and then I open it back up so like it's slim, uh, like a, like kind of um, slim. Anyways, I was eating this with some maple syrup, of course, and like oh my god, like you know the core was hitting me, and I just immediately felt like relaxed. I'm like oh okay, now I'm ready to sleep. Now I'm ready to sleep. But like it's just like what are we, what are you eating this for? What are you talking? Like, what, you don't eat this stuff. I'm like yeah, I'm like you know what actually like recently I'm trying to see how much ice cream and pancakes I can eat while still looking. Reasonably attractive, <laughs> reasonably <laughs> reasonably lean, <laughs> and like I, I just said as a joke, but like literally like, you know, um, it's fun to be able to to like eat like it's fun to be able to have a little bit of alcohol. It's fun to be able to have some ice cream or some pancakes, whatever food you really enjoy, um, and fit it into your diet, and you know, get leaner or even just maintain your leanness, and like enjoy the experience. Like yes, like eighty percent of my nutrition is probably uh, meats, eggs, uh, vegetables cottage cheese, and like potatoes and sweet potatoes. But then I have fun, the other 20%. The other 20% is like, you know what? I'm going to have some uh, pancakes or some, uh, you know, ice cream. Yeah. And I'm just going to be accountable. You know, I'm going to be accountable about my, my nutrition intake, and that's it. You should try having ice cream on top of your pancakes. See, that's what she, she actually told me that. She's like, well, like <laughs> you should actually combine the two. They should conflate. I'm like, oh, genius, genius, oh. genius, genius. Um, but in terms, uh, of, in terms of like texture and temperature, dude, I don't know if I can handle yeah, the pancakes oh. and the ice cream. That will have to be oh, like I would, I would have like an insta instant carb coma. I would like pass out. Oh Jesus! In, in, in the pancake, I'd be like, 
just uh, well, I'll, face, I'll, face I'll down. And, yeah, well, when I when I get down to like, because I'm just leaning down a bit more. Um, you know, I'm just around 10, 10 half percent body fat, and I go down to like, I should probably just like eight and a half percent, um, just because I don't like care to be crazy ripped. Um, just like you know, um, just look fantastic. Uh, but not overly, overly done. But like, yeah, when I when I get there, I'll probably like, you know, I'll probably just have a video, of ice cream and pancakes, <laughs> just a typical day, just a typical. <laughs> like, that's like hey, that, uh, life with 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 Gregor Gallagher, Gog Nine, Kino Body. Uh, yeah. Okay, guys, you know, <laughs> all about the all about the fitness. Like, you know, you gotta have the dedication. Uh, it's important to make sure to have enough pancakes and ice cream in your day, and see how much you can incorporate. Um, <laughs> That's like that guy, uh, I think it, it's like Timberwolf on the... Uh... Yeah, do you know what I know? I used to personal train at the same gym as him. Really? Okay, yeah. He's, yeah, he's, from, he's from Toronto. He, that guy is ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, super, super ripped. For anyone listening who doesn't know who this guy is, he's like insanely shredded. Um, I first found him on that website, simplyshredded.com. Yeah. And that if you watch some of his videos... The dude will crush like a dozen donuts. I'm like, how is this guy eating a dozen donuts? And then and his post-workout meal is like a bunch of Big Macs too. Yeah, but but still, like I, I think quite a bit of that is actually just hype. And it's also at the point where he he is actually just really freaking lean, and he's probably been that way for quite a while. And yeah. he's pushing it. Like his goal right now is not necessarily to get leaner because you can't get leaner, but it's more of like how much can I push it? Plus, it's fun. And it's also slightly misleading um, for him to be like, you know, crushing like ten Big Macs after after. Right. Well, you, you, because I it, think it like people <laughs> think that like, oh, I can eat ten Big Macs too, and uh, still get lean. Uh, but well, you, you, well, I think like um, the the twelve donuts are just for fun. Like, like clearly he's over. He's going. Yeah, this is not like a typical yeah, day. Exactly. But, like, I, I remember reading that post on Simply Shredded, and he was like, you know, he really is all about, you know. Focusing on his macros, and that's what I also prescribe. Is like, you know what, setting hitting your macros is the most important thing if your goal yeah. is body composition. And so he like is, and and he also found that like he pro, he responds better to more fat in his diet. So I know his macros have uh, are skewed more towards like high in protein, but skewed more towards fat than carbs. And other people prefer the inverse. Um, but like, so I mean, he fits in like so quite a few of his meals. He'll have like some fast food, some McDonald's, and I'll just make sure he's got those macros and those calories for that meal. And uh, like he fits it all into his respective day, um, and I've heard him talk about intermittent fasting and stuff. Like he's like so. I mean, like that's what he's and and it works amazingly. Like this guy stays at like six percent body fat. He's got he's insanely red. He's got veins up in his abs and stuff, um, which is a, a little bit excessive. Like I think it's a little bit. It's not as tasteful for like normal people. It's only yeah. like the cra crazy fitness people. Like oh my god, that's amazing. Like any like like any like chick or any anyone be like okay that veins in your abs all yeah, the way up all the way up your abs, that's not sexy. That's I not. Think, I totally agree. I think with well with women about men and with men about women like you as a guy you don't want a woman who's super lean. Yeah, um, like, like like some girls. I hear, there's a diminishing returns basically. There's a because massive di massive diminishing the returns. Like I know some like actually my sister she like. She's totally cool, like normal and everything. But like, some she has got a couple friends that like are obsessed. They have obsessive like you know eating disorders, and like they pride themselves on the prominence of their collarbones. Whoa! I'm not even kidding. It's like look how visible my collarbone is. That's how skin. And it's just like that's not a sign of attractiveness, okay? If your ribs yeah. are protruding, your collarbone's protruding. This is not what men. <laughs> this is not what men are attracted to. Oh, yeah. uh, it's like it's not it's like there's you know what like. For a guy, like you know, what it's great to like it's it's very cool to have you know, um, or it's 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 very attractive to have like some nice set of abs that are defined, but you don't need to have veins running up them. That's when you take it too far, and the law of diminishing returns become then becomes the law of, um, like backward, the law of uh, retracted returns. Yeah, because like you you went from looking less attractive. You, yeah, you left, went from looking really freaking sweet, and then it's like too much, and it's like ugh. Um, yeah. Then it's like, uh, oh, it's kind of freakish. Well, yeah, like I've shown, like I've shown, <laughs> like I've, sh I've so shown some people some of the pictures when I was like literally the most ripped. I had like some picture where I looked like Bruce Lee at one point, and like you know, the, you know, mo like some people are like, holy shit, that's crazy. But like most normal people are just like, wow, it's a bit too lean. It looks like a little bit too much. Yeah. Um, 
and that was when I was at. So I mean, I, I see. I've always found like eight to ten percent body fat is is. I agree. I, yeah, for ideal. men, men, that's perfect. It's perfect. Men. It's also a good range to stay healthy and to keep your uh, like your hormone balance. Mm-hmm. If if you achieve it over a longer period of time. Yeah, it's like, but trying to stay at like six, seven percent body fat is gonna like it's it's gonna like it's not fun. I mean, you're gonna like your, your testosterone is probably gonna uh, take a hit. Yeah, just because. It's just how it works. It, right. Yeah. Like, I, and I know some people that found like even when they were like staying that lean, like they found that like you know because I guess the nutrition was lower, they weren't able to eat as, as many calories or whatnot. Like they they got sick more often. Um, and uh, and they weren't able to recover as much from training, trying to be be so lean. Like Frank Shamrock, an MMA fighter, like at one point he he was like super ripped, but he just realized like you know what, like it's it's being this ripped is is interfering with my ability to train yeah. and recover. Which so. which means he's gonna get beat. Yeah. In a fight, you know. So. Um, so I mean, eight to ten percent body fat for a guy. That's like that's like the hallmark. That that's like perfect. Um, I mean, maybe if you're like, you know, Brad Pitt, you gotta have to do a shirtless scene. Maybe you can lean down for a couple days, but it's you're still gonna look crazy good. Um, yeah, that's that's the thing we were, we were talking about. Like, if you're in the eight to ten percent body fat range and you're like a model or you're doing a shoot or something like that, you're already really lean and you're gonna look good if you just get rid of the water underneath your skin. Mm-hmm. But and the only way, to, you know, the the best way to do that is just like you, you know. Drink a lot of coffee, for example, but flush out with with additional water. Drink enough water that'll start flushing it out. But you're gonna look great. Same with women. Um, it, you know, it's obviously a higher body fat for percentage for women. But when you kind of reach that sweet spot, uh, try and stay there, and then you're within striking distance in terms of if you want to look like super good. Maybe you're like going to a pool party or something. You can prepare like a week ahead of time uh, to look great. And I- like well, I'm, I remember a couple times like you know you know um, when I wanted to like look really good, um, I would uh, and this is when I was like pretty lean like you know nine percent body fat, I would like just keep my calories like at a bit of a deficit for a few days, um, tight it up, and then the day before I would have like a you know a glass of red wine, uh, which also helps like improve like uh, blood flow, which is good yeah. for a little bit of vascularity, and so and I would have a gra- glass of red wine and I would jump in this hot bath. Which I'd pour Epsom salts in, and Epsom salts help like suck the water out from under your skin. So if you ever want to look really sharp, and my younger brother used to do this too, just because it helped with like he found it relaxing, helped with his recovery, and like the day after we do these Epsom salt baths, he would be just shredded to the bone. Um, and like same thing, like when I did it, like the next day I'd look super sharp, dense, dry, hard, and it's really cool. So that's something you could try. It's not going to make a difference if. If like it's gonna help if you're already like visible, like visible yeah. definition in all areas within striking distance. Yeah, within striking. So I mean, if you're at the 10% or lower range, uh, it will make a difference. If you're 15% body fat, it's no one's gonna be like, oh my god, <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you might look like you're 14% body fat. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not gonna be a huge difference. It's yeah, it's not gonna um, really make a profound difference with your. And we and we could definitely do an episode or write articles about about that kind of stuff because that's more on the fringe and that's obviously for more of a select group of people uh, but it is an interesting topic show preparation right. or or uh, like in my own experience like photo shoot preparation and that sort of thing so right. like I don't which, think you have to go overly complicated at all I mean just like maybe the day before maybe you don't have a ton of salt with uh, your dinner meal and that makes it like that's one thing that um, people obsess about is like salt intake and it's like look uh, keeping your salt low is actually counterintuitive or counterproductive. Salts actually require nutrient by the body. Cutting it down is not a good idea. So just just use a natural amount of salt, like to your taste, and then um, your, your your I mean, salt influences water retention, but it's only based on homeostasis. So if you're always having a lot of salt, your body will naturally have normal levels of water retention. Then if you cut down the salt the day before or two days before, I I just say do it like the last meal before, um, then your body will lose a bit of water. Uh, and so you look a little bit drier, a little bit sharper. Um, but on the other hand, if you barely have any salt in your diet, your body will just naturally gravitate to normal water retention. And then if you try, then you can't drop your salt any lower, so you can't actually lose any water, uh, any excess water. And then if you do incorporate some salt, you're just going to get like bloated. So it, it, it's counterproductive to try and cut salt all the time. Just eat a normal amount, whatever your taste buds tell you to. 
Um, and then that way you, you have room to cut salt if you want to look a little bit better, you know, one day. Yeah. So that's like one trick. Like for me, if I want to look really good and take a nice picture the next day or, or look good for like a, for a pool party, I'll just be like, okay, uh, let's just not have any salt in this dinner meal. Okay, let's take a hot bath and let's with Epsom salts and like let's have a glass of wine. And sure enough... The next day, it's like, damn, I just dropped 2% body fat. <laughs> yeah. I didn't, actually. I just looked like I did. It's just, yeah, you just get rid of the water. Yeah. So, that, yeah. For whatever I mean, that's worth. Take it for what it's worth. Take it, yeah, take it for what it's worth. Another tool uh, in the toolbox. And the alcohol is because, you know, alcohol helps to hydrate you. Like, you lose water. So, it, it, yeah. uh, it has that sort of drying effect. Uh, all right, well, I think we hit the hour mark. Any, th any other things that we want to uh, talk about? Uh, let's see. Well, I just put up a an article, uh, the third article in the testosterone series over on nogym.net. So if you're listening to this and you're interested in naturally increasing your testosterone, this is actually a sample. There are three sample training plans, one for beginner, intermediate, and advanced. And the explanation why, uh, based on the literature, I think the squat is not the king of testosterone movements as it's been preached and you can go and check out what I think is. So that's that's one thing. Um, yeah, dude, that's a killer article. I loved it. It was really, really good. Thanks. And it was sweet to see the, the three different plans, beginner, intermediate, advanced. Um, so yep. it was definitely a sweet article worth checking out. And that's over at nogym.net. And and then I am, of course, uh, kinobody.com. And, I mean, you can go check that out. I have a new article um, on there. And uh, I did mention my muscle building course. It's on there, so... It's people getting pretty crazy gains. Sweet. And I'm excited for Chris's testosterone course. Yeah, I. Did, I you, did we wait. announce it yet? Did we wait. announce it on uh, on uh, Have we announced it on here yet? I don't think. No, we, we didn't. I don't think it's, we have. Yeah, so there's probably a decent amount of people who listen to this who ha don't like read my blog or um, whatever. If you don't, you should. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> <laughs> whatever, guys. <laughs> no. Whatever. Um, but yeah, so I'm working on a, uh, a program for guys, and uh, sorry, ladies, no no love in this in this series uh, for testosterone. But you can take it away actually quite a bit in terms of like endocrine optimization. Uh, and I would love to get uh, down and dirty with the program in terms of uh, female endocrine optimization in the future. So keep an eye out for that. But I'm doing a testosterone one right now. How to naturally increase your testosterone? Basically, how I did it and how you can do it as well. So it's like I'm trying to turn this into a replicable process. So in the, right now, uh, on the blog, there, there are three. But as of the recording of this episode, there will be four parts in a series. Um, tons. They're big, meaty articles. Four or five thousand word articles. Very Lots of detail. Uh, I'm digging through PubMed like a lot and trying to make the best conclusions and I'm also working on uh, like an overall program that hopefully I'll be able to release sometime this September so September 2013 for anyone listening in the future um, yeah and I'm pretty pumped because I think it's gonna help like a ton of people because this this field is is like a desert it's one of what I said in the first series of the, the article series it's like trying to irrigate a desert because the only things that that exist really in, in this field is just like dogmatic stuff that's been just recycled over and over and over. And totally. And there's no context with, with the information you're given if you try and learn about it. It's like, do squat. Yeah. Like, there's no implementation, especially in like, a full and complete nutrition and training protocol. People are just like, you know, uh, like lift heavy, do squats, eat tons of fat, um, like, you know, take zinc. It's just like all these things, it's just like it has to, you have to fit it together and it's got to be in a balance, otherwise it's not going to do anything. Yeah, because there are, there are just quite a few facets to actually implementing this correctly and it, it's hard I mean the articles that I'm putting up are dense I'm not gonna lie about that and I'm trying to I'm not like deliberately trying to add detail that's not necessary everything in the articles are necessary um, but I'm doing it because I want people to learn uh, the, the the reason and like the science behind it the reason things happen the way they do and then with, when you know that stuff, then you're better able to manipulate it as opposed and, – and make your own conclusions. I'm making my own conclusions based on the literature and my own experience. But if you read it and you read the literature and you make a different conclusion, then that's awesome. 
but at least you're you're um, educating yourself on on what's out there. Um, also, if people are reading it and they see they know of some papers and reviews and whatnot that that I might be missing, just shoot me a link. Uh, I would love to love to read it. This is more of a discussion as opposed to like I'm not trying to say like I'm perfectly right uh, because I think anytime someone does that, it's just like kind of dumb. There's, this is always a discussion, but I want to open the discussion up because I think what people have been predicating is not necessarily the best way to do it, and I'm trying to express what I think is the best way to do it. So that's that's been a process for me, and it will be for the next couple weeks. I'm trying to get it out next month. So, and then I'll, obviously I'll probably end up revising the program, but um, what I'm giving works. It works in my own life. I think it'll work in almost every guy who reads it's life um, you don't you know I'll try and make it easy to digest uh, it's pretty pretty cool subject very very cool oh yeah <laughs> all right uh, it's been an amazing episode today um, and I guess that we're gonna sign off now so hope you enjoyed the podcast if you really enjoyed it make sure to share it with your your friends your loved ones and your not so loved ones yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, like <laughs> remember if you, if you. Oh yeah, yeah. Like your enemies deserve to <laughs> get in shape too. Get that in was shape. Crack me up. Yeah. The. Uh, yeah. If and if you feel compelled, if you if you think what we're doing is is helpful, um, we would love a like a review in the iTunes store. That would be super helpful to us. And, and as we're talking about in terms of taking action. See if you can take action on writing a review. That's the first step. <laughs> that's the very first step. If yeah, you can't even write word. a review, if you listen to this right now, you can't even write a review, how are you even going to implement a nutrition and training program? So first step is take action, write up a review, positive, negative, neutral, uh, you know, just to share your, your experience. All right. Yep. Take care. Bye. <laughs>